Good morning, welcome to the premium public video forecast discussion for Friday, December 22nd, 2023. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen Martino. Well, it is pretty chilly out there this morning with temperatures ranging from the upper teens to lower 20s over the northern interior, lower to mid 20s in your suburbs, and upper 20s to lower 30s in your urban areas and down towards southwest New Jersey. Plenty of cold air in place. Fortunately, the timing is just off, so no, there's not going to be any threat for any type of white Christmas or anything of that nature. Of course, there isn't much in the way of moisture in the atmosphere either, so that's also going against you as well. With high pressure and complete control for today, the last Friday before Christmas, for all you kids out there, it looks like the weather pattern that is setting up is going to be just fine for old St. Nick. When you take a look at the 850 millibar temperatures here, you can see the cold air that's in place, but warm air is on the way as this high pressure system shifts off the coast. So as that happens at 850 millibars, this mild air will invade from the Pacific. And then again, we'll have these waves of polar and Pacific air continuing until we start to see our pattern change, which we'll talk about in just a moment. On the infrared satellite picture, you can see not much in the way of any type of major storms developing. It's going to be a pretty quiet pattern. The most significant precipitation we're going to see through Monday, Christmas Day, is basically going to be an isolated shower maybe on uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning. Other than that, or maybe a passing flurry. But other than that, no significant precipitation is expected. Less than a tenth of an inch from any of these showers associated with this shortwave here. So really going with sky cloud cover for the forecast. Take a look at our jet streams here. We have the subtropical jet stream very active here down towards the south. And we have our polar jet stream here that is also very active. And changes are on the way. Now there is the aforementioned Pacific jet stream, which did not reach the west coast. It certainly is strong, but you could already see parts of it already starting to break down with waves already starting to show up and short waves starting to develop. So we don't have this zonal all the way through, but we certainly have this jet stream, which is part of the MJO phases that were six and now moving through seven. And now we're heading towards eight. We'll talk about the MJO phases in just a moment. Here is our water vapor satellite picture with Again, our trough here getting ready to leave here. Milder air on the way. Trouble is brewing off towards the end of the month. So let's talk about what is driving our weather pattern right now. Uh, now, I want to show you, this is the SOI. This is a way to study the influence between the El Nino that's in place and the actual atmospheric response. And thus far, the atmospheric response has been very weak. Uh, impressively weak considering how warm the sea surface temperatures are is a significant disconnect for something that i haven't seen quite frankly ever so this is certainly something that's very interesting that needs to be studied as to why the soi is not really uh playing ball here but we're finally getting some strong signals here in the daily contributions okay and what this will signal is that our monthly and seasonal vibes will start to fall off again and this is also a signal when you see a significant negative uh, value that shows up uh, in the SOI and the daily values that starts to indicate a higher potential for a storm developing on the east coast of the United States. And why is that? Well, it's because of the connection between the tropical forcing in the atmosphere. Now, this is the uh, MJO forecast, okay? And currently we are moving through phase seven and neutral phase here starting to push into phase eight and the models you could look at are the gfs versions you got the cfs you got the european uh extended guidance here you got the canadian jma the australian guidance here what we're noticing here is that we're getting two distinct types of influences or, or indications of where this is going to go. The European guidance here takes you into a neutral state after the end of the month and the 1st of January. The other European guidance, the ensemble guidance, does basically the same thing. 
Now, the European Extended Guidance in this version also takes you into a neutral state. But this version of the European Guidance takes you into a very weak phase 3, 4, and 5, which, as we know, are mild indications. At the same time, we're seeing on the CFS this kind of loop-to-loop. -loop. So what is actually happening here in, in all of these uh, versions of the guidance. What basically we're seeing is the model guidance having a difficult time handling all of the factors involved in forecasting for this tropical forcing. And so what I suggest is to stay short in the forecast. You know, go into the five to 10 day period and that is about it as far as trust. And what we basically trust and what we know is that the MJO is moving into phases seven eight one and two over the next 10 to 15 days and what that means when we talk about that is how is the convection being influenced here now as i've been discussing for a while now the el nino or la nina whichever one's in place is a dominant background force and then the mjo works on top of that background force in terms of waves so this is your El Nino influence, and there's all your convection firing up around the date line. And then here are the MJO influences along the tropics. Now, when the MJO is in phases eight, one, and two, this area is enhanced, which enhances subtropical jet stream, juices it up, and gets some very active and interesting weather here on the eastern United States. It also opens up the potential for the polar jet stream to interact. That's why you get those colder anomalies, because the polar jet stream is able to drop south. When the MJO is in phases 3, 4, and 5, this gets reduced. It's still present, but gets reduced. And as a result, the wavelengths in your jet stream get basically uh, altered, and you end up with more of a zonal pattern meanwhile while all that's going on with the tropical forcing a lot of notice is being taken on the stratosphere and boy oh boy is the european ensembles really really calling a shot saying hey look this looks like it's going to go into a wind reversal possibly now if this happens the polar vortex basically weakens significantly and you're going to see all sorts of high latitude blocking uh, starting to set up and you end up with a pattern where the colder air is basically focused towards the mid latitudes almost all the mid latitudes and so you end up with a very stormy pattern because you're having a disrupted polar vortex with an active subtropical jet stream which can lead to all sorts of mischief so some very interesting data showing up here when, when when we were looking at that i'm like wow that is impressive and then you see following up here on the uh, operational guidance certainly support for very strong stratospheric warming very impressive and what that means for the winds is that as we get to day six, so here we are day six, you see the winds are cutting across from Siberia, or should I say uh, portions of Kamchatka all the way into uh, Greenland, right? So that certainly won't transport cold air down towards the Eastern United States. But what we see is this change. And when this happens, and this is at 50 millibars of these winds, you're basically taking air masses from Siberia and China, where it is brutally cold, and sending that into North America, while you still have this feature showing up here, which is your active subtropical jet stream. And that's also showing up here in the 500 millibars. We get closer down towards the surface, down towards 500 millibars. Again, there is that indication. There's that, that's how you get your cold air funneling into the south, it's showing up on all the guidance here. So definitely, it looks like the idea of the pattern change starting to evolve December 20th has worked out, you know, with the stratospheric warming starting and the indications of the tropical forcing shifting with El Nino shifting from east base to central base. Now, as we head towards January, where the idea is that that's when our winter storm threats are going to start to increase, we get the cold air coming in, 
a robust ridge here on the west coast trough where you want it around the Aleutians trough on the southeast coast here in, in the eastern United States the only thing missing now is a little bit more high latitude blocking building into Greenland and it looks like that follows up as well so all the pieces are moving together what you want to see in this aspect here is that the polar jet stream remains with that ridge here transporting the cold air southward and our subtropical jet stream keeps on saying short wave after short wave undercutting that cold air and interacting with it so that is essentially what we're starting to see evolve here in our weather pattern in the meantime it's gonna be pretty quiet you know all the way through christmas until we get to about the middle of next week so again that nice little ridge axis passing through on christmas day is going to support tranquil conditions we are going to moderate with our temperatures as well so that's certainly some good news in that respect we're going to keep an eye on this storm for wednesday through friday now it's like a rain all the time wednesday through friday but i think what's happening here is that we are seeing a evolution of this cold front and then you have this primary low up here in the great lakes or is it going to be on the coast and there is a lot of volatility in the question of that because from run to run we're getting different solutions and that's going to be a determining factor in terms of our temperature so we're going to keep an eye on that and see how that plays out we have a couple of days to work out that forecast and then with this trough building in all that cold air builds south and then we start to watch out for short waves like this interacting with all that cold air building southward so diving into this forecast for today high pressures in control is a bit chilly out there with temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 30s for highs throughout the region for tonight into tomorrow high pressure starts to exit look for sky cloud cover with low temperatures in the mid to upper 20s tomorrow afternoon sky cloud cover is expected with temperatures ranging from the upper 30s to lower 40s over the northern interior mid 40s along the coast on sunday christmas eve sky cloud cover could be an isolated rain or snow shower but really not expecting much in a way of any type of significant precipitation look for low temperatures in the mid to upper 30s and high temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 40s over the northern interior upper 40s to lower 50s along the coast for christmas eve night as santa heads out tranquil conditions are expected with sky cloud cover low temperatures by christmas morning will range from the lower to mid 30s throughout the region by christmas afternoon look for high temperatures to range from the lower to mid 50s on tuesday look for clouds to increase with showers developing towards evening, look for low temperatures in the lower to mid 30s over the northern interior, mid to upper 30s along the coast. High temperatures will range from the lower to mid 50s. Rain comes in in the evening, continues on through Wednesday, with temperatures ranging from the upper 40s to lower 50s for lows, and lower to mid 50s over the interior and mid to upper 50s along the coast for highs. On Thursday, another trough and cold front will swing on through, possibly a low pressure system development. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Temperatures will range from the mid to upper 30s over the northern interior, lower to mid 40s along the coast. High temperatures range from the mid to upper 40s over the interior and lower to mid 50s along the coast. And on Friday, look for sky cloud cover with temperatures free falling throughout the day. Look for low temperatures in the morning in the lower to mid 30s and high temperatures in the late morning in the mid to upper 40s and then steadily fall thereafter through the 30s and 20s as that cold front moves through. That is your forecast discussion for today. Have a wonderful weekend. I will be back with videos once again on Tuesday, but we'll continue to have updates in the morning via text. So looking forward to, uh, I hope all of you enjoy the holiday weekend. And I will see you again on Tuesday. Have a wonderful day. And as always, stay safe out there.